Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Acquiring Clinical Process Knowledge, Lecture B. Objectives for this lecture are to create an agenda for an opening meeting to discuss workflow processes in a healthcare facility, in light of that facility's strategic goals and stakeholders. Identify the workflow processes that are likely to be used by a healthcare facility. Identify the workflow processes that are essential to observe in order to determine how best to streamline the operations in a given healthcare facility, and identify key individuals with whom the practice workflow and information management redesign specialist should meet or observe in order to gain an understanding of the nature and complexity of their work. Basic topics covered in this lecture include methods to acquire knowledge about the practice, including Clinic information such as mission, stakeholders, and goals that can help inform the analysis, common clinic processes, and creating a process inventory. Mission, vision, strategic goals, and stakeholders differ from organization to organization in ways that can affect process analysis. For example, a clinic that also serves as a research site will have different information and workflow requirements. The clinic staff may need a way to know which patients are participating in a research study and a way to schedule and bill separately for study visits and procedures. A public health clinic has responsibilities in addition to patient care that impact information and workflow requirements. Public health clinics also oversee directly observed therapy and oversee reportable communicable diseases by performing contact investigations. This information is important because it impacts workflow. It is often publicly available or documented such that a healthcare facility can provide it in document form prior to your initial visit. As a healthcare workflow process analyst and redesign specialist, your time with practice leadership and staff is limited, so do your homework at home. Don't waste your time in the clinic gathering this information from interviews or from multiple people. Use valuable time on-site to clarify or fill in gaps in information that is not otherwise obtainable. Nothing will irritate busy practice staff like wasting their time. A stakeholder is an individual or group that participates in a process or organization or is impacted by it. Examples of organizational stakeholders include patients, owners or shareholders, suppliers, payers, employees, and regulators. It is important to keep an organization's stakeholders in mind. Acquiring knowledge means learning how the practice performs each of its core functions. Billing, prescription writing, office visits, and referrals are functions performed by most practices. Other functions vary according to the type of practice. For example, a small practice may draw blood but may not perform any lab tests while large practices may draw blood and have the equipment necessary to perform common blood-based lab tests. The lab tests, other diagnostic tests and procedures vary by practice size and speciality. Remember, the goal is to obtain enough information about a process to create a process diagram or to document the process in writing. The written document allows you to check your understanding with others to make sure you have the information correct. Then you can analyze the process and leverage health IT where appropriate. Your first step in knowledge acquisition is to develop a list of the main processes at a clinic. We'll call it a process inventory. I mentioned identification of major processes in use at a healthcare facility in Unit 1, the concepts of healthcare processes and process analysis. After the processes are listed, the analyst works with leadership at the healthcare facility to identify those that are of high priority for analysis and improvement. All of the processes can't be assessed in the time available. Some can't be feasibly improved with the available resources. For others, the game would be too small to make the effort worthwhile. Still, others can be improved, but by means other than the use of health IT. After the processes for analysis have been identified, the analyst, working with people from the clinic, creates diagrams of the processes. These graphical representations of the process are used in the process analysis and redesign. We start with the process inventory and diagrams because 
sometimes they are all that is needed, and they point to areas where different types of objective information may be needed. Unit 2, Process Mapping, Theory and Rationale, covers creating process diagrams. The current unit assumes that students are familiar with at least one method of creating a graphical representation of a process. For example, a flowchart. Some processes are very important, and if the process of interest is not operating well, patient care or practice productivity may suffer. These are high-priority processes. Other processes are less significant in terms of patient care and operations. You will likely have to concentrate on high-priority processes, those that can be improved and those that can be improved through health IT. A process inventory is a list of the main processes used by a practice. Common clinic processes include patient check-in, patient visit, writing prescriptions, assimilating received documentation, collecting specimens for laboratory analysis and other diagnostic tests, referrals to other specialists and consultations, disease management, and billing. You can always start from this list of common processes and add processes that are specific to the practice you are working with. If there are more than 20 or 30 processes on your inventory for a practice, you may be working at too detailed a level. If the practice consists of multiple specialties, you will have a larger number of processes on the inventory and the analysis will take longer. Next, we will look at an example of identifying practice processes. These will include by phone appointment scheduling, new patient intake and registration using paper charts, receiving and communicating lab results using a paper chart, and routine prescription refill with no EMR. After these instructions, pause the slides. Read the scenarios listed on the slide. They should be included in your course materials. Pretend that these scenarios represent all of the services that a clinic performs. Make a list of the processes. After you have finished, restart the slides, and on the next slide, we will go over the results. Pause the slides now. In a real clinic setting, you will have a list of common processes based on previous experience and can make a list or a quick one-page diagram of all of the functions the clinic performs. In this exercise, you did not have that opportunity. You had to go by what was explicitly stated in the scenario and what other processes are implied. For example, patient visit was implied because the patient came to the clinic. Similarly, billing was implied because there is usually a bill where a service is performed. Even in a real clinic setting, you will need to follow up on implied processes to find out if they should be a part of your analysis. For each process, the main activities, roles, locations, flow, and information needs are identified, i.e., this is the knowledge that needs to be acquired. Further knowledge acquisition and analysis are intertwined. To analyze a process with the goal of health IT implementation, you will need to identify which of several common process variations are in use at a clinic and what the likely exceptions are. This information is elicited during knowledge acquisition. Exercises on process analysis are also in the process analysis unit. A complete analysis of a process is one that takes into account each process participant's point of view, patients especially. The act of acquiring the knowledge is just as important as the resulting diagrams or other process documentation. An analyst goes through a period of learning when seeking the information to create process diagrams. Delineating the process steps, their sequence, how that sequence is decided, who or what performs process steps, where the steps are performed, and what the information needs are, is a structured way for analysts and practice staff alike to view the process from a different perspective. The act of reducing a process down to these aspects prompts questions about why the process is done that way or why a task is done at all. The act of acquiring knowledge is often where process problems or opportunities for improvement are identified. A simple story illustrates this. I met a process analyst at a recent meeting. The analyst told a story about a visit that he made to a clinical practice for the purpose of process analysis. He observed different members of the practice as they performed their jobs. 
The analyst noticed that the receptionist made a copy of each patient's insurance card for the chart. For every copy, about 50 per day, she went to the copier at the opposite end of the office. Upon observation, it was obvious that getting a small copier for the front desk would save a lot of time. Time that could be used by the receptionist to return patient calls or respond to calls for appointments. The analyst made this simple suggestion based on his observations, i.e., in the process of gathering information to create process diagrams. The diagrams do not, in themselves, impart any magic. The magic happens when we use a structured way to think about processes. There are many different ways of thinking about processes. The diagrams are a good way to document and communicate the results of this process. For each process, there will be several sources that can be used in knowledge acquisition. These include process participants, the facility procedure manual, which is applicable to this process, and information used and produced in the process. These are, of course, in addition to observing and walking through actual processes in the clinic yourself. This concludes Lecture B of Acquiring Clinical Process Knowledge. In this lecture, we covered methods to acquire knowledge about the practice, including clinic information such as mission, stakeholders, and goals that can help inform the analysis, common clinic processes, and creating a process inventory.